Hi, Kamal. Welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Uh, this week in your column, you're talking about RBI's open market operations. Now, it's been three weeks since uh, RBI actually surprised the markets with its uh, OMOs. Uh, one of the main reasons is obviously to manage liquidity, the currency. Uh, what are some of the other reasons why RBI resorts to these open market operations? Can you explain to us? Yeah, Ruchika, actually, you know, uh, traditionally it's it's perceived that way more is for uh, liquidity management because when Reserve Bank of India buys dollar, which means the banks get money out of that, so you are adding liquidity. And when Reserve Bank of India sells dollar um, through open market operations, it, it absorbs liquidity. Uh, so it's something like people might say it's like CRR, but it is not. It is not. Um, it's uh, liquidity management is only one of the um, at least three things that Waymo uh, Waymo does. Uh, first is liquidity management, as I said. Uh, second would be the yield management. I mean, the government of India, of course, definitely would not say that. But historically, we have seen that uh, the Bank of India also manages yield. Like for Dr. Reddy, he used it for a very brief Waymo, very short Waymo, but in his time in two thousand five. If I remember correctly, uh, he signaled that the that the yield will go up. And similarly, um, um, another RBI governor, Subarao, you know, he he announced an OMO, and he actually wanted to manage the yield to bring it down so that the banks would not require uh, to uh, to make larger position and book losses in their investment book just before the year end. Uh, you know, in March, he, he did that. So, because OMO, what happens? You are adding to the supply side, and obviously, it will have an impact on the yield. And of course, the cutoff yield at the auction RBI itself is decides. So, in this case, I would like to believe uh, it will not be uh, to push down the yield. It it will be to push up the yield. Uh, theoretically, it can go up because the supply is more, and practically, RBI. You know, it's his own handle to decide on the uh, cutoff in the world. And finally, very uh, it's a very creative thing, I would say. Uh, through this route, RBI also can have a handle on the rupee. Now, the US Treasury yield has crossed the 5% marks and our markets have also reacted uh, to it on Monday. Is there a connection uh, between that and uh, uh, the RBI operations? Yeah, exactly, Ruchika. Meaning RBI did not anticipate this and did that, but there is indeed a connection. Why? And that's where the rupee thing comes. What happens is this, when US yield has been going up, it touched 5% and 10-year yield I'm talking about. So then happened. what happens is, is the, the, the spread or the difference between US yield and Indian yield shrinks. Now, when uh, for the global investors, why would they come to India and buy Indian bond when they are getting higher returns in US? So this is the problem. Just for history's sake, I'm telling you, at this point of time, the, the spread between US tenure and Indian tenure is around uh, 2.4 percentage point. Mm -hmm. And this is the last seen in <laughs> April 2006. So you can see it's a it's a 17 year uh, since 17 years, um, it's this yield has not been so narrow. But just to a uh, few things, the lowest spread uh, <laughs> there had been even much much lower, only 61 basis point historically. That happened in uh, 2004, and in the past two and a half decades, you know, since 1997 or so, 1978, the average spread between India and US yield is 6.94 percent. Yeah, it's six. Uh, no, sorry, has been four point six four percentage point. Four point six four. So now it's two point four. It's much much less. And the highest yield was the difference. Uh, it was six point nine four percentage point. It was recorded on May thirty first, two thousand twelve. And at that time, what was the US yield? Which is five percent now. At that time, US yield was one point five six percent versus 5% now. And Indian yield was 8.5%. So Indian yield has, is much lower now and US yield is much, much higher now. But the spread is shrinking and that would lead investors to shift from Indian market to back to US. And so which means what well, that will be uh, less dollar coming into the system and putting pressure on rupee. So 
it it could be a master stroke and a very innovative way of managing the rupee as well there's a third way of using it the other important news that happened in the banking sector was the appointment of uh, ashok paswani as the ceo of kotak mahindra bank uh, tamal the market seems to have reacted uh, a lot to this news uh, why is that well it's a pleasant surprise i would say and it's a master stroke uh, mm-hmm. by uh, uday kotak if i may say so because you know everybody was expecting somebody an insider i would not name it but certainly this gentleman's name popped up and um, there's no insider involved so uh, it actually serves multiple purposes for mr uh, for um, for um, the bank one is this this gentleman is the first uh, global banker coming to india since 1994 when uh, when uh, aditya puri came uh, but that was a different field aditya puri started a new bank and you remember aditya puri also started his career in india then he of course shifted out and he was one of the favorite man i mean rightly so chosen figure of john reed then then city bank uh, global head but after aditya puri whoever there are many uh, foreign bankers ran indian banks or even still running indian banks but they are uh, indians and running the foreign operations of india here is a banker who had his entire banking career overseas um, both in city as well as barclays and uh, he is a specialist in consumer banking so it has come with uh, you know right kind of credentials he is also a techy when the every bank is you know striving to become tech companies that also will help and finally you know by, had there been an insider the market would have perceived probably that uday kotak will do backseat driving but uh, this gentleman by bringing him uh, he has um, he has actually scotched all those things uh, it's uh, absolutely now um, it will be a board driven bank and run by this entity Thank you so much, Tamal, for, for shedding light on all these issues. Uh, RBI's OMOs uh, certainly uh, you've uh, explained very well how it is a very innovative uh, way to address the concerns that are arising uh, because of the global headwinds as well, and uh, also uh, about the U.S. Treasury reads and the uh, appointment of uh, the new Kotak Mahindra Bank CEO. Uh, well, we'll see if uh, how this master stroke, as you call it. Uh, pan out in the days to come thank you so much samal for joining us today thank you if you like this video share it and subscribe to business standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on youtube twitter facebook instagram telegram and linkedin i am the blue of the limitless sky i am the inspiration that let success so high i will achieve nation's trusted bank sbi the banker to every indian